What's up everyone, John from ARTV. Sorry for the long gap in between reviews, but bear with me over these next couple of weeks. Got a lot of things going on right now, but the year-end lists are in the works. They'll be out all throughout the process. There's a lot of work that goes into that, and of course I'm in the process of moving right now as well. So, just if the reviews aren't coming out as steadily as normal, bear with me. Today we're going to be talking about Ellie Golding's new one, though. It's called Delirium, and I've actually been a pretty big fan of this woman over the past few years. I picked up her album Lights whenever that song of the same name charted pretty high in the U.S. Kind of fell into an Ellie Golding phase there for a little bit. I was pretty big into her music and, of course, the record Halcyon that came out in 2012 as well. She's from the U.K., international sensation at this point, has had huge smashes like Anything Can Happen, Lights, Love Me Like You Do, and of course, On My Mind, the lead single from this new LP. But it's been three years since we got Halcyon. I love that record. It's very unique. It's something that's, I think, very visceral. She paints a lot of pictures with her mind and takes us, with the production at least, to a lot of different places. I just thought it was one of those records that stood out in a world of pop music that is very... Uh, a toned down and a lot of times just not something that's very personable or relatable and I found that record to be very very strong and I had to compliment Miss Golding for that. Now her new record is much more straightforward in its pop approach and I'm not saying that that's always a bad thing. If you saw my review of On My Mind you know that I really enjoy that track and in fact it's just grown on me with time and thank you. I have to give a quick thank you to everyone that watched that. It got over a hundred thousand views which is absolutely insane. I don't get that kind of attention, so whenever I do, obviously it's kind of a big deal to me. So thank you guys so much to everyone who watched that, and of course, new people who subscribe to Beyond ARTV as a result. If you want to see it, it's linked in the description down below. Ellie Golding's voice is definitely something that gives her an advantage in the playing field here in the pop market. She can hit everything from the soprano range to tenor and just alto, really a lot of different ranges here, and I like to see her showing off her voice. And I'm not saying that she necessarily does that a ton. There aren't some huge moments on here where it seems like we're in a theatrical type record, and it doesn't really need to be. The record doesn't call for that. Like I said, much more four on the floor danceable pop tunes this time around, and I'm not saying that she's had the life sucked out of her and that they're less personable necessarily because there are tracks that are more emotionally in check. It's just that a lot of them are much more fun, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. The problems I start to have is whenever the production gets in the way of me having a good time. I do dig the variation that this album offers up with more danceable jams like Codes, On My Mind, and Lost and Found really rallying up the spirits, and the more mid-tempo songs like Army, which was released as a pre-release single, I believe, Devotion, and Scream It Out, just holding it down for the slower and more intimate moments. ARMY did take a little bit of warming up to, for me, and Scream It Out as well. I think ARMY struggled to catch my attention because of its lackluster chorus. The verses are very well pinned, and I think they're very well sung as well, but whenever the hook rolls around, it just feels lazy. It's just such a trend in the pop world these days to just kind of have a repetitive, looped, vocal or a couple of different words that are uttered and then just an electronic beat that kind of flourishes over and over again in place of any actual intelligent lyrics whenever it comes to the chorus, but maybe that's just me that's getting irritated over that. Now what I was saying with the production, I do think that it's often commendable. Greg Kirsten and the rest of the team did a pretty good job a lot of the time, but I do find it problematic for some of these tracks. The warped wub of We Can't Move to This almost detracts from the very vibe that it was going for in the first place. It just feels a bit grating, even though I do think the layered vocals sound nice on this track. And how about that odd EDM trance that the track Devotion slipped into? Is it just me, or did that feel like totally out of place, out of left field, and it just doesn't fit at all? The trap-flavored instrumental on Keep On Dancing is cool enough, but the whistles, whenever they come in, they just kind of irk me, you know? I thought they sounded cool enough the first couple of times, with the Maybe a time or two would have been a nice touch, but making them such a prominent aspect of the song was a mistake, in my opinion. They just don't sound pleasant, easily making this one of my least favorite songs on Delirium. If you had told me DJ Mustard produced Don't Need No Body, I might have actually believed you. He's actually had a couple of good beats this year, I'll give him that, but I'm just saying that he has a very stereotypical sound, and whenever those synths kicked in on this track, I was like, oh boy, here we go. This is... DJ Mustard. We're about to hear one of his traditional mustard on the beat ho 
type things, but it wasn't that. It turns out it was actually the struts that were responsible for making this mainstream top 40 leaning radio ready track. That's what it seems like to me, and I'm not saying that that is always a bad thing. I think whenever people hear the word radio or top 40, they think evil or something like that, and that's not what I'm saying. It does feel very limiting though for Miss Golding. She has a lot of talent and a lot of flair and I don't see the spark in her eyes on this track if you will. It's got all of the right elements and that's something that I can say for a lot of the tracks on this record. It's catchy but it doesn't stick necessarily and that's problematic when I'm seeing this problem flare up from time to time here on Delirium. I think that there's a fair amount of songs that have a few woes, like things just didn't quite pair up correctly and that makes for some more forgettable tunes. Let's focus on some positive aspects though. I like Ellie Golding. I think her albums, even though they are a bit lengthy, there's always something to dig into here. I think the track Don't Panic was a fantastic tune, really one of my favorites on this record. It has this massive hook that just flies without really trying too hard. The echoed vocals on here are a very nice touch as well, very commendable, and I have to mention that they have what sounds like a real drum kit being played on this track, and that's something that you don't hear in the world of pop music, I feel like, not often enough at least. We get a lot of those programmed drums, they sound fine a lot of the time, but whenever you hear the real drums kicking in, it just adds that much more life to the tune. The charming and pretty much irresistible Something in the Way You Move was released as a promotional single, but I actually held off listening to it until the album dropped. I don't like to listen to more than two songs before an album comes out. I don't want to spoil it for myself, you know? Move sounds slightly 80s influenced, but not in an oh my god, I'm making an 80s song because everybody else is making an 80s song type way, but I have to say that the track Around You that pops up later does feel like it leans that way a little bit more, but I still don't think it's distasteful. In fact, that is a damn fun song. It's very different and unique and stands out even from this track listing. Love Me Like You Do from the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack crept its way out of the track listing here, probably because because the label said, hey, this is a huge smash and we can't really miss out on including this on the record. I mean, it's a catchy song, but it's played out at this point. Let's talk about Codes instead, a fresh electro popper that's shooting vibrant vibes out of pretty much every single seam. Easily a top favorite of mine, complete with this steady bumping synth line, smooth bass, and of course the fantastic voice of Miss Ellie Golding. Can't forget to mention the tune Lost and Found before I go because there's such a great spirit about this this track. It feels like we're on a little journey here. There's a clear story flowing all throughout and that's something that we don't get enough. I also love that the guitars blend in so well and play a very integral role in the success of this song. It's not something that you would it's not something that you would expect, and it's not something that we get enough in Top 40 Radio, and you would expect it, especially once the hook rolls around, to get surrounded by the electronics, kind of get mumbled in the mix, but that wasn't the case here. They were brought up to the forefront and actually made this song stand out even more. Now, you've probably noticed at this point, but I do have feelings on each side of the fence with this record. I mean, it's lengthy with just the standard edition of this record clocking in at 56 minutes long. I mean, imagine if I had covered the Target Super Deluxe edition of the record or whatever it's called. It's an hour and a half long. Who the hell has time for that? Solid production from Greg Kirsten and the rest of the crew throughout most of this thing. I mean, there's some misfires for sure, but I think that this is something that a lot of people are going to gravitate towards. I can't commentate on the lot I can't comment on the longevity of this record, although Halcyon is something that stuck with me for quite a while. I actually really enjoyed listening to it whenever I was preparing for this review. But overall, for Delirium, I think that there's strong songs, there's some stuff that's just not quite as great. It does pale in comparison to some of her past releases, but it's still a solid enough release. I say 3.5 out of 5. For Delirium. I have to say that this was a pretty cohesive record for an album called Delirium. If you don't know the term, if you're not familiar with it, Google it right now and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Thanks so much for watching. Smashing the like button on this review, let me know that you enjoyed it, and maybe subscribe to the channel because friends don't like friends go unsubscribed. If there's other albums you'd like to see me tackle, let me know with a comment down below. Other than that, I plan on seeing you guys very soon right here on ARTV.